Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Welcome to episode 46 of the Not So Beginner series, and this is like a end of season review as the season tick has just finished. Well, the last tick of the league games. We've got a very short season in Sweden. I think it's only 26 games in the whole season, so it does go pretty quickly. And this is just um, how the league finished and how the European campaign is going by any of the sides that are left. Um, there's not many left, sadly. Um, but first of all, let's look at what the league now looks like after we've just had the final league game. There we go. And this is what the league table looks like after 26 games, which is the final amount of games in the season. Um, it became... Basically, it became a two-horse race between AIK and Elsinborg. Um, Trailborg were involved, um, as you can see in other future uh, previous ticks, um, but they their form then dropped, and VF managed to overtake them eventually. Um, Gothenburg also managed to catch up. The, you could still see there were still many groups bunched up, like for instance um, this group here. Then you had a group here which involved my Elfsborg side. And then um, it, it became a very good, tight league, um, except for the top two sides. Helsingborg and ARK, um, Helsingborg were top of the table for a few ticks, then they met my Elfsborg side, who were on an unbeaten run, and we managed to get a point, a couple of points off them, uh, which kind of not helped him, <laughs> helped Mike out, sorry about that, Mike. And then Fritz at AIK returned to the top of the table. AIK have mostly been at the top of the table for quite a while, during the season, um, so I'm just going to wait until this. Sadly, the the server's a bit slow today. Um, there you go. So if you look at the history of AIK, when it oh not the history, sorry, I'm looking at the. I don't normally have to find out where the stats. Oh, is it stats? Yeah, stats. Um, normally, this would show the chart of where positions but as you can see here oh there you go it's just taken a while to load up um, so this is the amount of games per season the team plays so you can see from game 21 to game 23 they were second and that's when Helsingborg took the top and then game 24 is when Helsingborg met my Elfsborg side and we drew one all and then ARK became top of the table um, so Fritz congratulations well winning the league um, and yeah, let's see out of all the sides who, out of my predictions, I got right and I got wrong. So what we need to do first is look at what the league table looked like at uh, end of last season. By doing that, we'll see, um, we can look back at a previous um, Manager Sim episode, which was episode 39, done on the 25th of September. So roughly a season, a league season in Sweden takes roughly about a month real time. So here we go. Just make the screen a little bit bigger for you. There is the, as it was at the beginning of the season, the final positions of the teams as they were. So who are the underachievers and overachievers? Well, obviously, um, Harmaby are probably the biggest underachievers because they were the league winners last season and they are now, they finished in sixth place. Joe Garden. Are another underachievers um, they dropped down from second down to um, tenth but that was mostly due to their manager leaving and also they haven't got a new manager since then uh, let's look at other positions so the top three were then were Hanby, Jurgarden and Malmo. Malmo finished third last uh, last season and they finished eighth this season so Case had a bit of a tough season a lot of us have um, biggest achievers obviously was, um, if we look just on here now, VF. VF had jumped up to third. Um, Cholborg, they did really well as well. Yeah, they came from eighth to fourth. Gothenburg stayed where they were near enough. They were fourth last season, fifth this season. Harmaby, of course, dropped down. Oribro were seventh this season. 
and they were sixth last season, so they stayed where they are. So the biggest achievers obviously were AIK, but there was there was no surprise to anyone with Fritz as the manager, very very good manager. Um, they were my actual pre-season prediction as the winners. Looking at my predictions, um, I actually got the bottom four dead on. Funny enough, I actually predicted the four as they are. I didn't do two right on other predictions though. My Elspork side, I actually predicted ninth and we finished ninth. So that was cool. And um, I actually got Gothenburg right. I predicted fifth and they became fifth. Um, but there was a lot of um, things I've got wrong. Obviously with VF, I predicted 10th and they finished third. Helsingborg doing really well. Trailball doing really well. And ARK. ARK, well, I've got them right at least. So that's how the league season finished. ARK... Um, they won 20, drawn 3, lost 3, finished on 63 points. So it would be ARK, Helsingborg and VF going to the Champions League next season. In UEFA Cup, it would be Trailborg and Gothenburg. So good luck, guys. Inter Toto, Harm would be in Orebro, which means, sadly, my own side, Elsborg, Malmo, Jorgarden, Halmstad and all the others, will all miss out on Europe this season. Um, next season, sorry. And, um, well, that will give me time to rebuild my Elsborg side. One thing that you all probably don't realise about my Elfsborg side is that we were actually on a, an unbeaten run. Um, if you click to my fixtures, and we go right to the end of the season, you count all these. One, two, three. So one drawn, two drawn, three drawn. One win, three drawn. One win, five drawn. Two wins, five drawn. Don't count your UEFA Cup, this is league. Three wins, five drawn. Three wins, four drawn, uh, six drawn. Three wins, seven drawn. Four wins, seven drawn. Four wins, nine drawn. And yeah. So we were actually unbeaten since November 28, 2009, when we lost to VF. So we were unbeaten in 13 league games, but out of those 13 league games, sadly, nine were drawn. Hence why we really didn't move up the table. So, <laughs> so a 13 game unbeaten run, and we ended up with a positive goal difference as well. So I was quite happy with that. Um, obviously, I wanted us to do better, but hey, we're, we're in a very tough league. My squad, let's look at my squad, because Ken originally the beginner series was to do with Elsborg, and still is. Here's my squad at the moment. We've got a lot of players, a lot of players' problems hit us hard again. Because um, I just like getting some really decent players. I have got some players who really play frequent games. So, for instance, Eikasson's my... was a Swedish international, but he's not really been picked for Swedish international. I made him to a more central role. He's the leader, so he's going to be my... He's kind of like our young captain. Kind of like that Ajax player in real life who's gone over to um, Real Madrid. The, I forgot, De Vinct or something. Um, so, if I have to nominate player player of the season, it will probably be Eikerson. So let's look at my stats on my team then. And it loads up. Um, my top scorer, two top scorers, Algman, Algren and Elkman. Algren probably gets it because he's played lesser games. So he scored 11 goals. Elkman scored 11 goals. They were the only two really scoring goals. So we had the, some frequent goals from the midfielders. Elkerson was the most assist, only five assists though, which is not brilliant. Um, so he was probably our man of the season, but Buki did all right, and Buki did very well. Our defence was very good, um, quite strong. So overall, we did well, but obviously we could do much better. And we're not in Europe next season, which is a bit of a blow, but I'm not surprised. Um, let's look at the table again for the seasonal awards. So the top scorer of the season was Aik's player, no surprise, which was this player here. I'm not going to pronounce that. He's not an Italian international, which is very surprising, but look at those stats. Look at those. Really good. You can see why he's scoring plenty of goals. Um, then Gothenburg was second top scorer. Oh, amazing stats again. And is my else? Well, yeah, Algren's in there. Uh, he's 10th, uh, 11th, something like that. 10th. Okay. So, another thing you can do also is assist. Who's the top assist player of the league? Oh, it's a VF player. Alf Willand. Oh wow, Swedish international, 23 years old, 122. Oh wow, was this the play he got for free? 
Yes, it was. <laughs> Thought so. So eight assists, yeah. Ark, Ark. Look at the assists they've got. Loads of them. Um, have I got any of my Elspeth side here? None. <laughs> what a surprise. Who were the bad boys then? The most distant primary points. Oh, there's two. One from Trailborg. Samuel Teshrin at uh, Trailborg. 23 games. And. Yeah. Doesn't actually say me how many red cards, yellow cards he got. But I'm sure he's a lot. And Torma at Norcorping, the AI side. They're the bad boys. Top man in the match. Who's the top man in the match then? Oh, so probably the player of the season because of the man in the match awards was this guy. So, Michelle, maybe you got man of the season because of the amount of man of matches you got and your rating was pretty decent and he got many goals as well. Yeah, he's up. He's definitely up there in the top three. Uh, best ratings then. This is um, obviously after only at least four league games. To make it a bit fair, so this time we need to just check. Like this guy only played four games, and even though he's a really good player, he's transfer listed. Okay, I wouldn't put him as top player. Hamstad, no, he's only played four, so disregard those top two. Mackenzie, yeah, Mackenzie, there you go, Mackenzie, seven point eight rating. Scottish international, only twenty years old. I would rate him probably, yeah, as the best rating player at the moment. And uh, then we've got one guy from Morobro. Yeah, very good. Rating of 7.8. Amazing rating this. Uh, again, for an Elspog side. Let's see for my Elspog side. Yeah, he's in the list. And it's Morientes. But Morientes only played nine games. So I wouldn't count him. And um, what else we got? Um, it's always good to look at these. So, best rating as a keeper. Silverholt is the best rating for a keeper, so congratulations. Helmstad, oh, so it's from Andre's side. Silverholt. So, what about defenders? Helsingborg, you've got one. Oh, that's the same player again, so we don't count, I don't think we count these two. Alright, is it Solberg? Yeah, Solberg at Malmo, best rating defender. Because this one, I think, is, yeah, he's only played four games. Midfielders, Helsingborg again. It's the same top two who we don't count. So it's McKenzie. McKenzie's top midfielder rating. No surprise really. Uh, Tackers, McKenzie again. Wow. McKenzie's definitely turning to I think the player of the season because he's winning a lot of awards here. Be interesting what you guys think who the player of the seasons. And let's put a little rule here. You're not allowed to. Bring forward your own players. You have to accept a player from another club as your player of the season. You can mention your own player, but he won't be your as a nomination for others to consider. But no, nominate someone else from some another club. Just out of interest, who's the highest weekly wage? Garn from Jurgarden. Jurgarden are AI side, so who is he's a good player, but who is the most ours? Oh, Lorenzon. The keeper. Okay. AIK got the highest wage, followed by Gothenburg's Clemente. Oh, he's only played two games, but 113,000 wage. Um, mine is Barker. Barker's having, he's my new striker, and he's kind of having a bit of a hit and miss season. <laughs> he's got good secondary stats, but the problem I've got with my strike is just a bit of off topic, is that I've just gotten two really good ones back in, so Figueroa who hasn't scored yet, but he should get better. And yeah, he hasn't got really some secondary stats, not brilliant. And Crygel, that's the one I really look forward to. But yeah, um, so I think McKenzie is probably my vote for um, the best player of the season. I'll just find him again. There he is. Let me know what you guys think. So, Congratulations again to Fritz for winning the um, league. Unlucky Mike, very close though. You made it a really good battle between you two. Be interesting what next season would be like. Um, I won't do next season predictions for a long time yet. Um, and also, we need to think about the Donut Cup if we want the Donut Cup to happen again for pre-season for June and July in the games. We've got a few ticks to think about it. 
And one thing I want to know from all you who are watching this, do you want to invite two or three or four sides not in Sweden to take part in a donut cup? One of it is I would not really want to invite Milan. No offence Mike, your Milan side are viciously strong. <laughs> um, very strong. And you would, you would walk the cup quite easily. So I'd take that as a compliment. Um, would I actually say no to any of the Italian sides? Because the old Italian sides are generally are, are very strong. Yeah, depending who wants to join us, I suppose. But I would say no to Milan because I think they would easily win the Donut Cup. Because even if you look at AIKs, who are the Swedish best side, um, Fritz, uh, Fritz would give Milan a battle. That'd be an interesting final if it got to that. But I think, think I still think Milan will win. Um, so let me know about the Donut Cup, everyone, if you still want it to go ahead. And then I'll start planning in a couple of days, weeks, time. Well, now, finally, we now go to the internationals. Um, as you remember, the UEFA Cup, you, we had four, four Swedish sides made into the quarterfinals, but sadly, only one got through. As I thought, the Italian sides are pretty strong, and they did knock out um, Gothenburg, sadly. Gothenburg made a right old good barrel of it though. Um, 98 minute goal. Oh, that sucks. So, <laughs> Perugia won in a 98 minute basically. So, unlucky there, Gothenburg. Uh, Oribro got knocked out by PSG on away goals, which is another really sucks as well. So, that's really unlucky. Um, so, at least these Swedish sides have given it a real good battle. And then a battle between the two Swedish clubs, Malmo. Malmo beat VF which was a bit of a surprise because I think most people would look at it thinking VF would do better than Malmo but Malmo won so well done um, semi-finals then Malmo are against my side my old my side my in the main game PSG first leg is a bit of away score result there despite going down to 10 men so they've got a very good chance to win the second leg so I hope they do and they'll be the only Swedish side in the final a final because the Champions League, Harmby sadly got knocked out in the quarterfinals by Middlesbrough. And the English sides are generally very strong as well. This is the aim of our Swedish sides, to make them as strong as this side, the main sides in Italy and, Italy and England. So the Champions League final is actually between Liverpool, which is um, Frank Canto's team. I think that could be... Yeah, that's a... That's a duplicate accounts someone else and Mike's Milan uh, good luck Mike 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 will be the favourites because they have won the Champions League for four years running <laughs> hence why I think Milan may be just too good for the Donut Cup so that's it so that's it for now um, again thanks for everyone taking part in the Swedish League if you want anything done differently in, on the broadcast then please just let me know on the episodes and we'll do predictions and everything else for the new season when that time comes um, again let me know about the donut cup do you want it do you want to carry on in its current format with just the um, eight sides so of course two human managers will miss out or do you want me to invite a couple of more non-swedish sides so we can get all these clubs in and then get a couple of non-swedish sides and maybe make it uh 12 teams or 16 teams i don't know um just let me know so thanks again and i'll talk to you all soon